everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. So glad you could join me at my craft table. So today's video is a series of five crafts that will get you started on your 4th of July patriotic uh, decorations. So let's go ahead and just head on down to the craft table. Our first craft today is actually a paper project. I purchased some 12 by 12 cardstock paper sheets from Michaels. Um, they are the Recollections brand and I have, I had one in red, one in uh, blue, and then um, I actually did have some white at home, so I didn't purchase any white. But um, the stars were cut out by my Cricut. Um, and I think I used the 100 pound heavy cardstock setting. So that's what are that's what are here. These are going to be used to make a star banner that we can hang up for our for our party. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build one card sandwich, so to speak. And we've got our red, our white, and our blue. And this file in Design Space was something like July 4th star banner or something like that. It was really easy to find. I, you could just literally look up July 4th in the projects and a lot of things will come up for you. But look, that's so cute. I really like that. So we're going to build three of these and then we're going to build three of the reverse where the red where the the uh, red will be at the top and the blue will be on the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to go around with some liquid glue and then we're going to line up these holes. Liquid glue allows you to wiggle things into place where you need them to be. That's why I really like liquid glue. Okay. I'm just going to set an acrylic block on top of that for the moment. And then we'll go around with our blue one. Oh, got a piece of fuzz. There we go. I'm excited to start planning out um, decorations and activities, etc. for 4th of July. Tell me down in the comments, what does your family normally do for 4th of July? We have a big cookout and, of course, you know, lots of fireworks. And it's just a really fun time. Of course, the last couple of years, we've had a storm come through almost threatening to cancel our fireworks. That has not been fun. I just put a bunch of different little dots of glue. I didn't use a bunch of lines on this one. And I'm just going to line that up like that. And perfect. There you go. Okay, so we got one there. I'll leave that to set. Let's go ahead and do a blue one. So all of the backers are either a solid blue or a solid red. And all of the middles are this white star cut out. Looks like this. Let's do the second one here. I almost feel like I need my tweezers so that I don't put my hands in some glue. Okay. Red star. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to have three of these and we're going to have three of these when we're finished and then we will be stringing them together to make a banner. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while you grab yourself something awesome to drink.
are down to our last one. How nice is that? These are super simple to put together. These are really, really nice. And you could definitely, um, you can find this in Design Space and you could absolutely, you know, um, duplicate the project as many times as you need to. I just starting here with six. And then I have a pretty thick, um, I have a pretty thick thing of twine, so I, I undid half of it. So I got two strings here, two strings there, and I thought these, just two would be perfect to go through these little holes. I want to put the uh, twine so that it is behind. We'll start out here with a big knot. Make sure that it, okay. I think that's good. And then I'm going to just thread the other end. And I'm going to go behind all of the stars like this. If I had thought about it, I would have gotten some um, like wooden beads. That would look so cute. And then I'll go, so we'll go in through the front, and then we'll go out through this front. Some wooden beads would be um, really nice spacers. But I don't have any, so I'm just going to let the twine naturally space itself. Another thing about this project is that the, the file in Design Space, you know, says July 4th or 4th July, and you could totally use that file for, I mean, you could make any three colors for events throughout the year. And you could do the same. You could do it for birthday parties or Christmas time. So the, the uh, file is absolutely amazing. I'm very thankful for the designer who put that together. Makes a quick and easy craft. And I would say about one inch there, about one inch, about one inch, yeah. These are working out to be about one inch spaced out. One more. Fantastic. Look at that. That is Wonderful. Okay, so this is the end of craft number one, and this would just hang super nicely somewhere. These are three layers of cardstock, so they're very, very sturdy. This is not a, a not a flimsy banner by any means, but you could make this as long as you need it. Wonderful. Okay, so that is the end of craft number one, and let's move on to craft number two. Let's do a vinyl craft. We'll just kind of go back and forth. Our next craft is a vinyl craft on wood. So I have these two squares here, and I simply covered them in a coat of white chalk paint. These are five by five squares. They're very thin, they're not real thick. And I thought that it would be a um, nice touch at the end to add a little ribbon hanger. So we've got some ribbon here. And then I have some red and some white, or some red and some blue vinyl to go onto the white. And I saw this as one complete sign. But then 
my mind was like, oh, I've got two little pieces of wood that could use those things. I think that would look fun. That would look great. So we are just going to quickly read out these middles. There we go. Okay, so this one says brave. And this one here says free. Okay, and then these are, these words are blue. Okay. And this is just, a, uh, this is just regular adhesive final. Um, I actually have not, um, historically I have not really gone too crazy to decorate for 4th of July unless there was a party, but this year I thought, have cricket, I will decorate. So why not, right? I've got so many craft supplies and it just, you know, it's not like I have to do a lot to make it happen. I really liked the version that it originally looked like, but I don't have one large piece of um, framed wood. To put it on. I have these two little ones so I just basically decided to cut the design in half and do two smaller little pieces instead of one big one. And this particular craft, um, doing it this way, well actually even doing it the regular way, is kind of like a uh, little scrap buster. You don't need a lot of vinyl to put these together. I just happen to have, I happen to have a lot of red and blue vinyl and hadn't quite really dipped into it yet, which is kind of weird. I think I use white and black the most. And uh, infusible ink, I use that a lot. Okay, so I'm missing a tiny little piece, and I'm assuming it has vacated the premises. Okay, so this is what these will look like. We have Land of the Free and home of the brave and then we'll have the um, ribbon to hang it with. So let me grab some transfer tape. Now I'm going to use paper transfer tape simply because I'm putting this vinyl on a painted wood surface. So it's a it's a lower tack lower tack transfer tape and it still gets the job done and I do like it I like that it's gentle whenever I decorate gift bags I use paper transfer tape if I am using this on like a card I use paper transfer tape Anything where I think the surface needs a gentler touch. Actually, now that I think about it, I probably should put the one in the corner first. Simply because everything is going to stem from that. Okay, so 
So now let's bring this in. I'm going to try and make that as straight as possible. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully it is as straight as I think it is, and then I won't have to pull it back up. And I'm just using my finger to go over the letters. I don't want to really burnish down the tape necessarily. I just want the tape is more there to help me get all the letters on there at one time. What do you think? Pretty straight? Okay, <clears throat> now this one, I mean, I don't want it cattywampus, but this one you get a little more play because of the, of the type set. So, there we go. Okay, that's good. went too fast and I didn't have that down far enough. There we go. Very nice. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So let's go ahead and reuse these same two pieces. Today is a rare treat. I, I am actually at home by myself. I almost don't know what to do with that. You know, being a mom, a wife, and a teacher, I am literally around another human being 24-7. So to be sitting here in my home by myself completely, this is a rare treat. But I'll take it. Okay, so this is the word brave. So land of the free, home of the brave. So my dad and my grandparents are all military veterans. You know, we've always been a pretty big military family then when your child goes and joins the military, that brings it to a whole new level. And it really, really ups your patriotic game for sure. Does that look, does that look even? I think so. Definitely puts a lot of things in perspective. So for all of you who are military mamas, I feel you. Especially if your especially if your child is deployed somewhere. So just know that there are people that Think about all of our men and women in service and their families and send up prayers for them daily. I think that looks good. Okay. And we'll get this in here. Every time I go to place the transfer tape on the project, I always hold my breath. Do you guys do that? Or is that a, is that me? And we'll just peel this up. Nice. Okay, those look great. Okay, so the only thing left for this particular craft is to put down The uh, ribbon. Okay, 
so I just need, I just need it to be about halfway down this way, and then a couple that way, and this. So let's figure out how many inches this is. A little over 11. I thought this was really cute. Simple and cute. And I think it was, um, I think this was on sale for like one something at Michael's. I can't remember. I don't like to <clears throat> have a lot of ribbon hanging around because then I tend not to use it. Okay, so we'll get those. And then I'm just going to use the grid lines on my mat. So I'm two and a half on each side. And a little blue here. So about two and a half. Same on the other side. You could certainly use whatever um, adhesive you prefer to use. This is what what it will look like when you want to hang it. Here's the second one. Okay. Let me try a different tactic this time. How about I go like that and then put the ribbon into that? Okay, so this is craft number two. So we just used some wood blanks and some chalk paint and some vinyl and ready to go. All right, let's move on to craft number three. Our next craft is another paper craft and this is a really fun one. We're going to build a three-dimensional popcorn box or like a little snack box and the fun thing is all of these blue stars that get cut out by your Cricut these are now something you can use for tabletop confetti you can use them for decorations on another craft you could even use them for shaker card elements so definitely hold on to those and I would not toss those out I am only doing one of these particular boxes for right now. Um, I wanted to test it out before I went and invested in a ton of cardstock. So this was also something that I found in Design Space. And so it's a little container. This is the bottom on the inside, and it has these little little tiny microscopic cut lines which act then as score lines. We have four walls and they each have a flap on the side that will get folded to be glued. And then we have our decorative elements. So each wall of the box will get a white layer that looks like this. And then each white layer will get a blue layer that looks like, like this. I thought those were so cute. Okay, so let's, let's do, um, let's put the blue on top of the white first. And... I actually don't think 
the direction matters, to be honest with you. But I do think it's important to get this glue starting to settle. I'm going to bring in, let's see, where's my, there it is. I'm going to bring in my acrylic block again. I definitely need to get some more of those. I could use several more and I could actually use larger ones to be honest with you. Okay, so I think I had it in this orientation. Right. These little boxes, um, you could definitely change the design, but these would make great, you know, family movie night little treat boxes or um, I don't know if you do little summer movie parties or stuff like that little birthday treat boxes I could think of a million ways to use these things okay, our last one I think that as crafters, sometimes we forget all of the awesome things that we can build with paper because we spend so much time creating with vinyl. Nothing wrong with vinyl. I have a ton of it and I love it. But sometimes I forget. It's like, oh yeah, my Cricut will do stuff with paper. So we've got sides. Okay, so now this particular part here is we're going to be folding in along these these little line, these cut lines which act as a score line. And then we'll be gluing it up against here like this. I have Where is it? I have this adhesive and it is like a slim double-sided tape and I'm wondering if okay, I'll put that there I'm wondering if this would be a good idea let's see what we Oh, that'll stick nicely on there. But then I will have to trim off these corners. Oh, and I probably should get my adhesive scissors. We'll just go around the edge all the way around. So these scissors, until I get a another pair of non-stick scissors. These have become my adhesive scissors. But I really want to get another pair of non-stick so that I can have one pair dedicated solely for adhesive. And I have no idea what brand or where I even got this particular tape that I'm using right now. I it is in my craft space. It it either came from Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree and I just I couldn't tell you. But it is basically a double sided tape. It has a carrier sheet right there. So Actually, I think that is going to work really well for this project. And it just happens to be the exact size that I need. I don't know if I could have planned that if I tried. So what 
question of the day, what do you think your family might be doing for 4th of July? Do you guys have big plans? Are you a, kind of a family that keeps everything low key? I'm hoping that our son gets to take leave. And then, of course, we'll probably go to my parents' house. And I'm just leaving these backer papers. I'm not taking the backer of the, of the tape off yet, simply because we're not at that stage. My daughter was so cute. We were at the store the other day, and they had a state flag and the United States flag in the store hanging. And she said, Mom, how come they only have the United States flag and like not another country and I thought it was it was so sweet of her you know she she was like why well, don't like why don't we fly, fly the France flag or something or like well we, we're not France <laughs> it was kind of hard for her to understand that you don't fly a different country's flag in the country you live in. So it took her a minute to think about that, but I thought it was cute that she was concerned that other people would be sad that we didn't have more than one country's flag up. <laughs> it's like, how sweet is that? Maybe gluing these down first would probably be best because I would hate to have to fight a three-dimensional object you could be fun you could write all kinds of messages underneath these blue things little secret messages written in glue behind your paper crafts. I think I'm really going to like this. I don't know that I would want to make like 50 of them. Oop. But if you had a small family, like a family of four or even even eight, you know, this would be a nice little craft to do on an afternoon with the kiddos. And it just requires glue and paper. Okay, two more and then we can build this box. So something that I just thought of is I just used regular textured, um, it's regular but textured, white cardstock. You could use like a, a white glitter shimmery cardstock. These would be so pretty with all that. Now I think we just need to put all this together. So, with that being said, oh, there's that little piece I was looking for earlier. Do you ever do that? Do you ever like find vinyl <laughs> in weird places way after the fact? Oh, such good times. Let's see, I'm just going to use my weeding tool to pull up these backer papers. I'm going to put this. And that will be the that will be the bottom that will be the inside and then we'll grab another one and our final one hopefully my box does not come out cattywampus oh that's pretty look that is really pretty in and of itself 
Wow, that's like a piece of artwork right there. Okay, so I'm going to take these backer papers off. And we're just going to fold it up like so, just like that. Okay, that's that's pretty good. These are definitely a lot bigger than I expected. I expected them to be smaller. Okay, last one. This came together so easy and so nicely. Look at that. That is amazing. I wish I could I wish I could think of ideas like this. I'm so glad I found this in Design Space. There it is. That is so nice. You can fill it with candy, you can fill it with popcorn, you could put paper flowers, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff. You could put tickets and draw for a prize. Okay, craft number three is good to go. Okay, craft number four. Um, I am actually, I have a white piece of cardstock here, the same textured cardstock that I've used for the, um, for the container and for the star banner. And then I've got a couple things cut out of vinyl. Um, this, I have never opened this. I never did put it up in the laundry room. And today, I don't know. I just, I really like the, the shiplap look of it. But I thought we could repurpose it. I don't have a very big laundry room is, is mostly the issue. And so, okay, so it is, and it's a little bit off, but that's all right. I thought that I could put this particular cardstock down and then I could put the vinyl design down on that kind of what I'm that's what I'm thinking so I measured this entire thing and this is an 8 by 8 square and what I did is I then decided to do a 6 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters white sheet of cardstock and then I thought it would just it would be just nice to be set it down there and I can make it straight all the way around I can make it even so I think the easiest thing will be to put adhesive strips on this particular this particular part <clears throat> because the paper is going to hang over just a hair which is fine um, design wise. Just do one in the middle. I think that'll be plenty. And we'll pull these up. There we go. And that made short work of that. And I want to make sure that that is. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, that is way better. That is way better than things being cattywampus. So, <clears throat> so we got that. And let's see. I'm gonna set this aside. This one, I I'm hoping that I did not make a poor decision on this particular graphic. It is so pretty. It is an outline of the United States but I'm what I'm hoping is is that when you start to weed you pull off the majority of the stuff and everything else stays behind 
like that. That would be amazing. Okay, so I'm just going to work slowly. Wow, that really stayed down. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. I do have um, in these flowers here, I, I do have to do a little bit of weeding. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to start putting this together on the board. Well, that definitely took me some time, but it was mostly like this flower and leaves cluster, this one here, here, and here. And I think I've got all the tiny little pieces off. So I am going to set that aside. Move this in more. And let's see. I feel like I have little, tiny little red specks all over me. And so now we're going to do our blue. Now these letters are really thin. And I really hope they don't give me any fits. Because sometimes when your letters are super thin, they, um, they like to be a little ornery. I'm kind of hoping that's not the case today. I like this font. I This was part of the image, so I don't know what font it is, but it it's like a tall, simplistic font, kind of like, um, like Ray Dunn, her handwriting. I'm going to cut here. And that way I don't have to worry about extra sticky things all over each other. Oh, that wasn't too bad. And then we'll grab that O. That A. The middle of our D. And that tiny little A right there. Great job. Land that I love. So now I'm going to bring this back in. And I think I'm going to have it go that way. This will sit, this will sit up here. And this will sit down there. So I think I'm going to start with the wording. Oh, that is going to be cutting it really close. I wonder if I can make these a little bit closer to each other. That my eye was a little too close to the T. This is what I always do. I always pick these really cute fonts that are super thin and difficult. Yeah. I'll just fix the eye separately, I think. And I can't decide what my favorite type of font is. You know, I like these really simplistic handwriting looking ones and then I I love those cursive ones and some of the thicker ones I don't know do you have a favorite um, do you have a favorite font that you like that you go to all the time 
there is one I would like to upload. It's called Brown Sugar. Okay, I think I'm going to coax this eye to come with this way just. That seems a little bit better. And that I love. Probably the L-O-V-E could come up. And I'm trying to decide if it's worth doing. Maybe I'll cut this off. Alright, so we're going to bring this part in. And again, I'm just going over the letter really because this is this is going on cardstock. I really don't want to pull up the cardstock or rip it. So I'm really just putting very little pressure down. Okay, I think that looks pretty good and that I love. And next we will put down our United States floral outline. This is really creative. I would have never thought to do something like that. But I did see it in design space and it was just, it was really it just looked really nice. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can do something with that. Got a little over here. I like these um, Zentangle kind of designs, you know, where it's you, you can tell what the actual shape is supposed to be, but then it's got all these interior lines. I love it, especially like the geometric ones. They just speak to me for some reason. Not sure. I feel like I have tiny little pieces all over me. All right, so let's see if we can get all of these tiny little pieces to stay down on the transfer tape. Okay, I think that that is good. I think that this guy needs to be here. All right. That definitely looks like the United States, so okay. I just had to go slow. All right, so now... I think I probably need to stand up for this one. And again, I'm just using my finger to burnish over just the red vinyl parts. I don't really want to get the other 
areas of the transfer tape down onto the cardstock. I just want to leave behind the vinyl. Okay, that looks really good to me. It's craft number four, so we are on to craft number five. Okay, so craft number five is a flat canvas, and I had just picked these up one day for my daughter at Walmart, but alas, she has not used them in... I mean, it's probably been a couple of years. So, I decided that I would commandeer them and turn them into some home decor. So, I'm going to open the first one for today. It comes in a pack of three, and these are 11 by 14. So, they're a pretty substantial size. And... Basically what I have is I have some layered subway art and the red layer goes on top, the blue layer goes on the bottom, and then there is two tiny little stars here on this particular sheet that those will get put on separately, okay? and literally two tiny stars, like one here and one there. And I'll just use my tweezers for those two. But these here, now what I did is on the top layer, the red has a red star right here. So I just pulled up the uh, shapes and in Design Space, and I added a star on top of it in design space and then welded that particular star to the bottom layer so that I can use that as a way to line up everything that's going to be going on. So I'm going to move this to the side for just a moment and whoop, that is not my weeding tool. Okay. Um, This is actually a pretty significant piece of glue <clears throat> that I will go ahead and just save for later. Scrap vinyl is so important. Okay, and then we'll just weed out one layer at a time and get that put on. <laughs> Looks like I've got some middles I have to weed out of the blue. That will be pretty easy. And like I said, this star here I added, it sits underneath that star that is part of the original design on the red layer. And that way it'll just help me to be able to line things up. Because this is a pretty significant size. I thought this was so neat. And it was, um, the other ones were like more summer themed, you know, um, cookouts and hot dogs and fireworks and stuff like that. I thought this one was great. It was very patriotic, which was just what I was looking for. And this would make a really nice um, infusible ink or a sublimation project, like on a pillow. 
That would be really, really fun. Hopefully everything is there the way it needs to be. <laughs> okay, and then we have... So this red layer will be essentially the top layer of the subway art. came off in one big big sheet that's really awesome we only have a few metals you could totally use this USA for like a card or something. I think I'm going to stick those there and I'm going to cut that off. Those are really nice letters. They would go well on a card. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get some transfer tape. And I'm going to put this on the transfer tape, and then I'm going to lay it over this, and then I'm going to pull off the back carrier sheet. Okay, so let's do that. This is going to require quite a big piece of transfer tape. And when I'm working with transfer tape this big I just grab a corner like I'm weeding vinyl and I just kind of expose about an inch along the transfer tape and then I put that down first and then I pull the backer off And then I just slowly pull this down while on this side I just go along and get all that down. This will be mm, the hard part. Let me get some parchment paper because it it tends to not stick to the parchment paper and then I can get it all lined up. This is what I mean by getting it exactly the way it needs to line up. So the star needs to line up along here. The USA, it is offset, so I'm not too terribly worried about the USA part. Okay, 
so I'm going to lift this up like a hinge. And this should be able to go straight down on this. Okay. And before we put anything down on the canvas, I'm going to pull off this blue star because it does not need to go. This is ready to go down. So this is what the final product will look like. And I think everything is nice and lined up. And those are supposed to be offset like that, so that's good. All right, it's time for us to get this down. So let's use the grid lines of our glass mat. That might be helpful. That means I'm going to do this like um, my, my iron-on vinyl, and I'm just going to like crease it down the middle there. So eleven, and then five and a half would be about right there. I'll make it where I have about an inch on both top and bottom. Here we go. And we'll just I'm just going to do a, a little bit at a time. So I probably could have totally used regular transfer tape, but I went ahead and just used my paper transfer tape that I've been using all along. Also, this could be done using um, HTV or infusible ink. You know, if you had enough red and blue uh, iron on. I wasn't sure that I had enough to do iron on. So I just went ahead and went with adhesive. Okay, let's oh that laid down so nicely on that that is really impressive okay so I just have two little stars left and I'm just going to place them kind of like you know, little stickers. One goes there. And one will go right there. Perfect. That looks good. All right, I'm going to bring in all of the crafts so we can see what we did today, and then I can decide which one was my favorite. Okay, so we made a cardstock three dimensional snack bucket, popcorn holder, candy dish. You could make one for everyone coming to your party. I love this. This turned out way better than I expected. So I'm really excited about that. And then we have a star banner. And this just used cardstock. Okay. Three layers of cardstock, red, white, and blue. These were super simple to cut out 
and string. So you could definitely make as you could just keep making more and more and more of these if you needed a longer strand. The uh, project makes six at a time. You could just double, triple, quadruple the project. So I love that. And then we have these two signs here. We have Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. And these would be a pair to be put together. Just some little signs. And then I have this one here. So this was a way to recover using this blank that has been sitting in my home for a couple of years. And uh, I just repurposed it. So the intended use is not how it's being used. But I think that looks great. And then finally, our subway art for 4th of July and patriotic themed sub subway art. This is really, really nice. Gosh, I'm having a really hard time picking a favorite. Um, oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know if I can pick a favorite. I am... I'm thinking maybe the subway art might be my favorite for today. Who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind in five minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I hope that you found this video was um, informative and inspiring and helpful for you to get a jump start on your 4th of July decor and party settings that you have going on with your family and friends and don't be afraid to hop into design space and go to that search bar and just put in things like patriotic and fourth of july and try out some of the projects that come up for you that's what i did today and i'm very pleased with all of them go ahead and hit that like button and the notification bell so you'll know the next time i post a video and in the meantime, until I see you again, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day. And as always, happy crafting.